One of the best ways to engage your students in algebra is to use a technique that was pioneered in Cambridge, England in the 1930s by these four gentlemen. They were trying to tile a square with smaller squares of all different sizes. This is not an example because here we have a rectangle that is tiled with squares of all different sizes, but we can still use their technique. So I'm going to give you a hint, and that is that that large square in the middle, that's a 7. That means that its dimensions are 7 by 7. But I'm not going to write 7s on all of the edges. I'm just going to write a single 7 in the middle. It's a square. The x is the variable that we're going to try to solve for. So that is an x by x little square underneath the 7. What else do we know? We know something about the square middle right. This square has to be 7 plus x. What about the square in the upper right and the lower right? Do we know something about them? Yes, we do. What do we know? We know that the upper right square, that's got to be 14 plus x, and the other one, 7 plus 2x. We know the middle bottom square. What is that? That's going to be 7 plus 3x. And then we're stuck. How are we going to move forward? Well, one way to move forward would be to choose this line and to ask, what are the dimensions of that square? Well, that line, if we measure it underneath, that's going to be 7 plus 3x plus x. And if we measure it on top, it's going to be question mark plus 7. So what does the question mark have to be? It has to be 4x. Good. That gives us 7 plus 7x there, and the big square is going to be 7 plus 11x. We're stuck again. Well, one way to move forward is to look at this line here, and measuring it on the left, that's going to be 7 plus 11x plus 4x, and measuring it on the right, those two have to be equal, measuring it on the right, it's going to be 14 plus x plus 7. Grouping terms on each side, I have 7 plus 15x, and on the right side that's going to be 14 plus 7, that's 21 plus x. Let's put all of the x's over on the left. So that would be 15x minus x, that would be 14x, is equal to 21 minus 7, that's going to be 14. Oh, so x is equal to 1. That's nice. So the big square in the top left, that's going to be 7 plus 11 times 1. 7 plus 11, that's 18. And in the upper right, we have 14 plus 1. That's 15. So we can solve all of the squares for that rectangle, and we have found our solution. On mathpickle.com, I'm going to give you lots of different puzzles to work on. Not all of these puzzles end up with squares that are different sizes, but I think there's a lot of fun puzzling to do there. Students tend to like this, uh, a large number of them, because it's aesthetically pleasing, the solutions. So here are some of the puzzles. I also want your students to come up with their own puzzles. When you're setting your students the task of creating these puzzles, they need to have a repertoire of possible uh, square solutions to begin with. And the best site on the internet for that is www.squaring.net. And I prefer to go to this part of the website, and then I can choose, for example, this rectangle, the largest square in it is 805 and the smallest is 155. So I can press that and then I can hit draw and it draws that rectangle for me with all of the squares. The person that we have to thank for creating this brilliant website that allows students to create some of the most beautiful puzzles that they're ever going to create in junior high is Stuart Anderson. Thank you, Stuart.